Hey, this is Janet with Paper and Spark, and today I'm super excited to walk you through how to use your Square Import Add-on spreadsheet. And this import add-on is geared specifically for helping Square users quickly and easily import in their Square transactions um, into the import add-on and then move it over to your seller spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is for sale at paperandspark.com. Just like with all of our spreadsheets, you can open the Square Import add-on in Numbers, Excel, or Google Sheets. And I'm going to walk you through how to use it by importing an actual Square CSV file from Square's reporting system. So let's get started. All right, so you'll begin by logging into your Square account. And then you will want to click Sales. You'll navigate over to Transactions. And after you click Transactions, you'll want to change the dates here to whatever month you would like to import. So right now I'm going to do the month of February. And then you click the Export button right here and select Transactions CSV from the menu. It's going to automatically download onto your computer and then you can open it in your spreadsheet software of choice. And it's going to look something like this. So just like with everything else that we do, we're going to copy and paste this into the applicable tab. So I'm going to select it all by clicking this little box right here above the one and to the left of A. I'm going to copy and I'm going to navigate to whatever month I'm importing in. And then click that cell again to make sure all the blank cells are selected. And then I'm going to paste. So once you've got that imported in, you'll see that the import add-on is going to automatically sum up your Square sales, your refunds issued, any tips collected, and your Square fees, along with some sales tax data. So just to review exactly how Square is calculating this, your Square sales will be your gross sales minus any discounts plus any sales tax collected. So this amount here includes the amount you charged your customer, net of any discounts that you gave them, plus sales tax collected. Okay, all of that is considered income to you. Now if you ever issue any refunds, any complete refunds, like 100% refund, that's going to show up as a negative amount in this gross sales column. So it will automatically be netted as part of your sales. However, if you ever issue a partial refund, like not 100%, but a partial refund, that's going to show up here in column J, the partial refund column. And the sum of your partial refunds will automatically total as a negative amount over here in the refunds column. So that's a little bit tricky with the way Square reports it. Just to sum that up, any full refunds that you issue are going to automatically reduce your sales. They'll be included here. Any partial refunds that you issue are going to show up in the refunds row here as a negative number. Your Square fees will not be included in these totals because they're going to be subtracted out separately as an expense over here. And then your sales tax collected, this is what you actually collected for Squarespace sales for sales tax purposes. It's basically summing up this tax column here. And then your in-state sales total, this is going to be the sum of any transaction that you collected sales tax on. So it's basically the gross sales minus the discounts issued for any amount any sale that has sales tax on it. So what that means is that these may not actually be your in-state sales because if you ever have an in-state sale that you did not charge any sales tax on, you had zero for sales tax in the sales tax column, that sale amount's not going to show up here as an in-state sale total. Unfortunately Square does not actually tell us the state of our customer anywhere so there's no way for you to truly know what state this customer is in. We just base it off of whether or not we collected sales tax or not. 
All right, so that's how you quickly just import in your square sales. Now you want to take these amounts and transfer them over to your main seller spreadsheet. So for this example, I'm going to use the Shopify seller spreadsheet. Um, what you would do is rename one of these custom rows for your square sales. And you could either do your total, you could just transfer this one amount over your total square sales, or you could insert a line for each one if you want to bring all of this info over individually. I'm going to do it the easiest way and just say uh, square net revenue, which is going to be my entire amount. So I'm going to enter $3,077.96 here for February. And now transferring it over here allows it to be auto, uh, automatically summed up for the month with the rest of my revenue listed here and for the year as well. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a custom row for square fees and type in my $56.45 of square fees. And then as far as the sales tax stuff goes, you can transfer this over here. Like you can just add in your own row if you want. Or whenever you do your state sales tax forms, just make sure that you consult all your seller spreadsheet and import tabs to make sure that you're including all your sales taxes and in-state sales from all sources if you don't want to transfer it over here and have it all in one place. You can do whatever is easiest for you. Make sure that you save both your main seller spreadsheet and that you save your square import add-on because this is like the backup of how you got to those numbers that you're just typing in over here. You want to have the records to prove like how you calculated this $3,077. And that is pretty much how you use the square import add-on. It's very simple and straightforward. And I hope that it makes your bookkeeping each month a little bit less stressful. Feel free to reach out at hello at paperandspark.com if you have any questions, and thanks for purchasing.